November 25th, 2016, Friday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and a heavy chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, which is the devil or Satan, and tied it up for a thousand years and threw it into the abyss, which he locked over it and sealed, so that it could no longer lead the nations astray until the thousand years are completed. After this, it is to be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones. Those who sat on them were entrusted with judgment. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast or its image, nor had accepted its mark on their foreheads or hands. They came to life, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Next, I saw a large white throne and the one who was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, the great and the lowly, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged according to their deeds, by what was written in the scrolls. The sea gave up its dead, then death and Hades gave up their dead. All the dead were judged according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the pool of fire. This pool of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the pool of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Here God lives among his people. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Here God lives among his people. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which he puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Here God lives among his people. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. Here God lives among his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. November 25th, Friday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time, the Memorial of St. Catherine of Alexandria. The first reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 1 to 4, and verse 11 to chapter 21, verse 2. We hear about how Satan is thrown into a prison for a thousand years. Now he's thrown into a prison because he has been defeated by the Lamb. And when did that defeat occur? On the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, Satan was defeated, and therefore his power is limited. He's, as it were, in prison. He's there for a thousand years before a second battle is fought, when he's definitively defeated. Now, what is that thousand-year period? A thousand in the book of Revelation means a long time. So, how long will it be between, between Satan's defeat on the cross and the end of the world? A long time. 
And how long will that be? As long as it lasts. We really don't know, but there will be this intermediate time when Satan is defeated, but he nevertheless has some power over us. He tempts us into sin. At the end of the world, the very end, he'll be thrown into the great lake of fire forever, and he'll have no power over us. Those who have died giving witness to Jesus will now be on thrones in heaven. They will receive their reward. And the skies and the earth vanish, and there's a new heaven and a new earth. First of all, notice there's no sea, because the sea was considered a reservoir of evil, where Satan dwelt. And the reason for that is that the Israelites were afraid of the sea. They considered it the dwelling place of Rahab, of Behemoth, these ancient sea creatures that brought chaos into the world. And therefore, at heaven, there'll be no sea in our final reward. But there's a new heavens and a new earth, that somehow that which we live upon the earth will continue. We don't know exactly what that means, but everything that taught us about God here upon this earth will continue in the next world. Song, dance, music, food, wine, whatever was good, whatever brought us closer to God will continue, but purified, because sometimes those very things would lead us into sin here upon the earth. In heaven, they will serve the purpose for which God intended them. There are two sets of books, the book of the living, which is the book of everyone's name who is going to heaven. And whose name was written in the book of living? Before the foundation of the world, everybody's name was written there. Now we can cancel our names out by a, a sinful lifestyle, but that's not God's intention. God intends for all of us to be saved. We have to accept that invitation. And then there's the book of deeds, that which we've done upon the earth, that that will be brought into heaven and either purified or transformed in God's love. The gospel is from Luke 21, 29 to 33. In these days, we've been hearing about the end of the world, and Jesus uses a parable about the fig tree. When you see it bud, you know summer is near. That when you see the signs, you can interpret the signs. So it should be with the end of the world. And Jesus says, in fact, that this generation will not pass away before these things have taken place. Well, the end of the world hasn't happened yet, so how can Jesus say that? But it seems to be that he's talking about his coming in glory in terms of his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his ascension. That that is the coming glory that will happen within the lifetime of those who are listening. While the fullness of that at the end of the world will happen when it happens. And may God bless us.